Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Local. I'm Evan and today I'm talking to one of my co-workers Bjorn and uh, in the in the spirit of transparency and disclosure uh, I know Bjorn. He works at PinMe2. He's part of the reason I work at PinMe2 because he was there for my final job interview and helped make the decision to bring me on. So Bjorn, welcome and thank you in, in more ways than one. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, and, uh, that was yeah, nice. so what do you do? At, what do you do at Pin Me Two? Okay. Oh, f thanks, Evan. Um, well, uh, I work in uh, the team called Customer Success, and basically, what we are is we are the uh, the people handling the aftermarket after people have become customers. So there are both there are uh, both specialists that uh, take care of uh, new customers to get them onboarded in a proper way uh, and then there are people that see to it that they the customers that are up and running get the full value out of the uh, uh, the, the platform and the services that we provide so um it's a little bit of everything and it's but it's taking care of uh, our wonderful uh, clients and customers hmm. and so in your role here it sounds like you have um you're you're with customers along uh, a long period of time, like from when they first start at Pin Me Two, through uh, as they continue to develop their their yeah. uh, skills and, and expertise. And how how do you see them? Like how do you see the the typical customer growing and learning over time? Well, also I like to mention I've been at Pin Me Two for a couple of years now, so and I've done uh, a few, been in a few other departments as well. So mm -hmm. I, I have a sort of decent insight into both the sort of pre. Uh, Process before they become a customer, but also afterward. Uh, you were and on the marketing I, team when, yeah, when I and I've been, that's why you hired me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's it's a quick growing company, and uh, over the years, I've done a little bit of everything. But uh, that said, um, I also sort of seen the development of, of the market in general and the knowledge of. Uh, just digital infrastructure for, for uh, the online to offline journey, how that has evolved, uh, how how the audience f for us uh, have grown and uh, and now are way more knowledgeable than they used to be in, in a couple of years ago. So it's been an, it's been an interesting journey. Um, back to your question. So I answered the right one. <laughs> yes, you did. You brought it around. Um, wow. And uh, so you said, yeah, you said you've seen this uh, this knowledge increasing. And um, and it's you know the, the shift to digital it has been uh, very big these these past yeah. few years um, you hear it talked about all the time um, and I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit about the uh, some of the challenges of digitalization for these big companies because um, you know at Pimmy too we we work work mostly with with companies that have twenty or more brands so these are big companies a lot of twenty or more locations so big companies, a lot of locations to manage. And um, for these companies, what are some of the challenges of that for them to uh, well, get digital? A good question. Um, well, yeah, as you mentioned, we work with, with the multi-location businesses and they are uh, by by uh, just naturally uh, not small organizations. They are, I, I used to usually think them as between medium and huge. Uh, and uh, and uh, what we do mainly uh, revolves around the marketing uh, department or the marketing side of things, basically. Uh, and the digitalization in marketing efforts over the last, I would say, 10 years, a lot of things have happened there um, and, uh, and is happening as we speak. But that said, there's also the sort of the old school way of thinking. Um, and if, if you find a, a, a marketing department that is very focused on their their brand, uh, their, their campaigns, uh, that sort of thing, it might be that uh, getting down, in, down and dirty in the numbers and the, and the sort of the digital side of things might be almost a thing that the head of marketing doesn't want to do. They want to be thinking about, I'm generalizing now, but they want to be thinking about their next Super Bowl commercial, that mm. sort of thing, because they're, they're trying right. to it's build their brand. It's sexier. Yeah. Uh, and they, I mean, no, people, they, they, I'm, I'm, I'm overstating a little bit because they, of course, understand the importance of, of having good data and knowing uh, how to find your audience, that type of thing. But um, it, it, it might be that they think of, 
the digital infrastructure underneath a sort of an hiding factor uh, and don't really realize if we don't work with it, the cool Super Bowl commercial that we're going to do, we won't get the full value of it unless we have uh, sort of tied the knots together underneath. Um, so I think that's a fairly common challenge that, that these organizations have, um, mm -hmm. yeah, just generally speaking. Yeah, and, and actually, I just want to um, to specify a bit because we've been talking about digitalization, but but uh, can you tell us, tell us about what specifically like becoming more digital or digitalizing means for these brands? Like yeah, okay. So f first of all, we, we should maybe mention that since we work for Pin with you, the, the part of this that we work with is uh, the online to offline journey to fix mm -hmm. uh, the data underneath there. So regardless of if a customer uses likes Google Maps or likes some other uh, um, and, tool or, or, uh, or application, uh, they can use that. And regardless, it doesn't really matter. The customer journey should just work. Um, but it, I've, I've previously, like my, my, my previous jobs, worked with uh, within web and uh, the digital side of things since uh, the last millennia now. So it's, it's been a while. Uh, and the, the issues and the problems that companies have are, are very, very similar. Um, they uh, and and one thing I think that people do a lot is they uh, get really really caught up in in uh, features or they get really caught up with their competitors are doing and they have sort of a, a an unclear view of their own goals. Um, mm. So, um, but but that's it. I see the other way. I see it the other way around too. Maybe they have some some clear goals, but they don't really know what's out there, what's possible to do. So. It's, it varies quite a bit. Mm. Mm. And, and when you talk about the online to offline journey, which you mentioned, um, it, yep. can, can you uh, explain that for people that might not be familiar with, with what that is? Absolutely. Let's break it down. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, uh, I, uh, I, I usually have this story to tell. Say you step off a train somewhere in a city that you don't know. And you realize you're going to stay there for a couple of days. Uh, and you realize you have forgotten something. Like uh, you didn't bring toothpaste or, or uh, socks or something. And that's, that's missing in your bag right now. And you think that stores are going to be closing pretty soon because it's that time of the day. And you just want to buy some stuff. Uh, and there's no one to ask. What do you do? Well, most people will say, well, I'll just pick up my phone and I use my favorite search app or, or a map service of some kind. Uh, and then, okay, so how does, well, let's say Google, how does Google know what the closing hours are for this particular store? And the answer is someone has to tell them, especially if it's uh, hours that deviate from normal or um, uh, that sort of thing, but normal hours too. Someone has to tell them. Uh, and how does Google know the exact longitude and latitude? Uh, how does Google know if, if uh, there, there's handicap access or like wheelchair access, that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. uh, can I pay with Apple Pay? <laughs> can I can I use credit card? Is it cash only? Uh, that sort of thing. All of these things, someone has to tell Google. Um, many times I, I, I find people think that Google solves this themselves or Apple Maps solves this themselves but they really don't. Um, they have bought this information or got this information from somewhere. Uh, and then it's been, and in, in Google's case, it's been curated somewhat by users, but probably not entirely and probably not completely correct. Uh, so there's going to be uh, a story about your location. Uh, and unless you as a business owner take control of that, it's, it's going to be more or less wrong. And that might cause a online to offline journey that is bad. Um, what we sure, want like, to have. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah no, I'm sure door, most the, of our listeners want, have had this experience with, with a yeah, bad you search for, online journey. You, you search for something, you go there, it's not there. That's not fun. Right. Or you go you not go fun. there and the door, you, you expect the door to be open, but it's closed. So, mm -hmm. uh, and that's 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 not good for, for many reasons. First of all, if you're the business owner, you won't get uh, the revenue. That's the most obvious one. And you, you also might get a disgruntled customer that you will never win back. So there are, uh, and then just for for just SEO purposes, having faulty information out that that might deviate completely on different networks that has implications. Uh, so there are all kinds of things that go into this. 
Right. But long answer right. to uh, long answer to a short question, but it's basically fixing. So when someone does some, something digitally, that has the possibility to end happily at a location in the real mm -hmm. world. Right. And um, right. Yeah, you mentioned showing up to a store that's that's closed. And I think most people have had that experience and it is a frustrating one. And um, I had uh, when, when I was visiting my grandma, who's 92, um, I was visiting her last time in Atlanta. Uh, she told me she really wanted some Popeyes fried chicken. So I put Popeyes into Google Maps and this Popeyes it pops up and we drive there. And not only is it not open, um, it is not even a, a Popeyes restaurant. It's the Popeyes head offices. Um, mm. But there was, this is not it, it was it was wrong. It, it said like a Popeyes restaurant it was in the restaurant category on Google Maps. So, um, you know, there are all kinds of ways that this info could be wrong and be frustrating. Yeah to, to yeah. people trying to use it. And you told the story when you were doing the interview prep, you told about how um, there's a location that was actually in London, but it said it was in Dubai or something well, like yeah, that. No, it's, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, we, we, since we go uh, we go and meet these, these big uh, um, chains and, and organizations with many, many locations, uh, during the process, when we get them onboarded, uh, they they provide us with their location data. Uh, so these are the locations that we have. This one is there. This one's there. And so the longitude and latitude for uh, a location was supposed to be in Dubai. Uh, that's where this store is. But it pointed to a place in Latvia, uh, mm. and that's a long drive. I can tell you, yeah. it's not. <laughs> it's probably not satisfactory. Let's just say that. Uh, and I have, I have another example of a location that was supposed to be in Paris, but it pointed to in the middle of the ocean, like middle of the Atlantic right. Ocean. Hopefully no one followed those directions but because you would drown and that's not satisfactory <laughs> either. But um, um, and I think that's because someone has been put in place to, to enter the longitude and latitude does not know how those work. If you're you're not like a sailor or, or like no. Mm -hmm. Uh, navigation these are not intuitive tools uh and, and numbers so so you need to know what you're doing and uh yeah so human error or or just maybe copy paste the wrong one or something like that who knows mm -hmm. so yeah and i I'm, 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 have many such examples but yeah it could be wrong completely so right and and as you touched on this risks not just um, not getting that particular customer at that particular time, but it also risks losing that customer forever because, you know, if depending on how pissed off you are, like if you end up in, in Latvia when you should be in Dubai, you know, you may not be ever trusting that brand again. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Um, and, and this isn't rocket science. It's, I mean, people just expect it to work. Um, mm. Uh, if I want, I, I haven't like a, a thing that an example that I think of myself, like I, with my family, we rented a, a place to stay. This was pre COVID, mind you. <laughs> uh, so it, it's not something we do right now. But when, like during vacation, we rented a place to stay and we're going there with our car. On the way, uh, we realized we need to stock up on food because we're going to stay there for a couple of days and we don't want to go out and eat every night because it's yeah, you, you like, mix it up a little bit. And I then use my favorite app. Uh, uh, it could be like uh, the the voice search in my my Apple CarPlay the place in, or it could be I'm um, just using Google Maps or Waze or App Maps or whatever. But I'm, I'm tr trying to find my way to the best nearest supermarket, and the best one is mm -hmm. the one that's closest to me. Um, how hard is it for that particular brand to market themselves to me at that point? Well, it's, it's pretty damn simple. They ha just have to have a door to walk through and I have to find it. Um, and again, going back to the story about uh, the story about a Super Bowl ad, or uh, I'm, I'm using that as a, an example, someone doing really, really cool stuff on the brand level of things. And that's mm -hmm. great because then I, maybe I have I've heard about the brand that I find. If I'm in, in a different country, it might be a brand that I've still heard about it. So I find something on the search function that I'm using and I try to go there. If that customer journey does not work, I will not give them my $100 or euros or, or a thousand mm -hmm. Swedish, um, which I otherwise would have. It's pretty mm -hmm. easy money, uh, it's, but it should just work. Right. So... Right. Um, yeah, that's just one part of it. And what we do, I mean, we digitalize this part of things, uh, but the issues and the problems that companies have, they are similar in, in other kinds, 
types of projects that in, in, in those similar areas. So it doesn't need necessarily need to be about location marketing and sort of local SEO and all those types of things that we work with. It could be a little bit of everything. It's just um, the challenges are, are, are very, very similar. And we've mm -hmm. both given a few examples of, of why the these are important, um, why it's important to have this data accurate and um, and of course, we're a little biased. We work at a company that helps. Yeah, yeah, of course, we're, we're, we're tuning our own horn, or of course we are. But <laughs> uh, I just want to I, I point out that you could use uh, these experiences for other things as well. Um, um, so uh, just think about the simple basic stuff underneath before you think about the fancy stuff that's supposed to go on top. Uh, because if you don't have the foundation, you won't get the full effect of, of uh, the shiny stuff. Um, and you probably need to do both. There's nothing wrong with cool and, and, and building a brand. You absolutely have to do that too. But for, for it to gain the full effect, you need to, to have uh, the infrastructure for people to use, especially in this digital day of age. I mean, and, right. And, yeah. and you touched on that at the beginning, this, this, the, the idea that companies are now embracing digitalization. Um, are they... Are companies understanding the the value of, of this online to offline customer journey, um, or if they don't maybe understand it from the get go, is it is it uh, easy to make that case to them? Do do they come around to it pretty quick when you show them when you talk about what we've been talking about? Uh, well, I think um, once we start talking to them, they are fairly understanding uh, and they they are fairly. Sort of knowledgeable about it, uh, but this has evolved over the years. I would say um, the first time I heard about this was like 2015 when I started starting working with the local stuff on the level that we do now, and and at that point I think many customers didn't know about the problem. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't know that they had to supply Apple Maps with their data for it to be correct. Uh, mm -hmm. They just thought. This is something Apple Maps fixes somehow, right? Mag magically, uh, or or it's not possible to influence anyway. Maybe uh, I don't know what their thinking was, but something like that. They didn't even try to to address it, and mm -hmm. the same thing goes for Facebook or or Google. So this was a problem left alone because yeah, and also maybe because their friends who had a similar job somewhere else didn't do it either. So why bother? Mm -hmm. um, over the years, I think it's grown, and I think like. Some people I talk to are very, very aware that this is an issue and it should be fixed. Maybe they don't know exactly how you do it, but it, they're definitely on the sort of, yes, we should handle this, uh, that, mm. that, that position. Uh, and then, of course, if it's uh, slightly less knowledgeable, yeah, they realize it's a problem, but they really have no idea to, how to handle it. Uh, and uh, they don't, maybe they don't have a budget to do it. They don't have a buy-in from their management, but they've, they've sort of come around a little bit. So depending on where on the maturity scale they are. Uh, it's, it's grown and moved, I would say. Um, and um, so for these, these, uh, these companies that um, are using it, I was hoping you could give us some examples of like best practices, thing, things they should be doing um, to get, be getting the most out of this. Yeah, okay. Uh, should we start with should be doing or shouldn't be doing? Which one would you want to bring up? I guess should we, we end, with should end on a happy doing. note? Should we, should, yeah, should we start that, on, on the bad note yeah. and end on the happy note? Sure, right. we need some um, optimism in this dark Swedish winter. We'll end on yeah. the happy note. Yeah, good idea. Actually, <laughs> actually sunny in Sweden today, which is a rarity this time of year. But yeah. <laughs> uh, but OK, so so do not. Uh, and these will vary a little bit between uh, detailed and more more general. And But anyways, one little bit detailed is if you're going to sort of attack the online to offline journey and try and fix that. Do not try and hack the different networks. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and when I say hack, uh, for example, one thing I see on people that have tried to fix their their um, their Google locations uh, manually, uh, which you can do, uh, they many times sort of deviate from the rules and recommendations that Google have. And this, this is true for other networks as well, but I'll just have this as an example. So one thing we see quite often is people have tried to stuff keywords into the name. The name. So instead of having 
uh, uh, just um, uh, realtor and or, or whatever the name of the business is. It says best realtor in Florida or something like really good prices for blah, 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 something like that. So it's, it's more of a tagline or, or uh, uh, something like that. This is not a good idea for many reasons. Uh, first of all, it will, will not get you better search results. Uh, at best, nothing happens. Uh, and if you're slightly unlucky, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to get a worst rank. You're going to get, end up lower down. Or, or at worst, you might have that uh, listing, that location suspended. Or you might even have the entire account and many locations suspended, depending on how big of a violation it is. So do not try and hack the networks and try and figure out smart ways to move around the rules and recommendations. And also do not look at what your competitors are doing and see they're doing it, so I'm going to do it too. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's not a clear indicator that it's a good idea. Sure, yeah. So that, that was one good. That's one good. Anybody who's Googled SEO tips or local SEO tips, there is a whole, you know, there are whole uh, professions or whole companies based around trying to guess or um, sort of manipulate or, or um, take advantage of loopholes in these algorithms yeah. that, that Google yeah. or Facebook that they have. And well, um, the, you can't, first of all, they're very secretive with their algorithms, so you can't know exactly what's going into it. And second of all, they will be like Google um, in particular is pretty well known for, for telling you like, this is what we're looking for. So I think that's yeah. great advice. Like take Google at its word when it says like, we want complete profiles and uh and verifiable trusted information like if they're saying they yeah, want exactly. that maybe give them that instead yeah. of stuffing keywords into your to your title yeah and uh, we have some excellent data to back this up too because we've seen companies that have good data uh, and then google does their big core update which they do a couple of times a year uh and the ones that have sort of compliant and good data get a boost out of that and that the ones that don't uh, either get bad results or no results so uh, mm -hmm. And this this has been true time and time again. So it's not something we are making up. But as you say, we don't really know what goes into the Google algorithm. I think you should be open about that. I would mm -hmm. mention though that uh, you talked about SEO agencies. Yeah, most of them are, are good, um, and most of them say so good stuff. I think, uh, mm -hmm. and it's especially true with classic SEO for websites. That's been around for years now. So some of the worst bad practices have been so. Sort of, banished from the market there i think but mm. it might might be true that for the local seo this is sort of a new toy that mm. people are still like experimenting with um a little mm. bit maybe but uh yeah most of them i think we are good trusted yeah. partners that's true i didn't mean to uh say no, anything no, mean about no SEO. But, but except but don't hack don't hack it don't hack it Just, yeah, play by the rules. yeah. <laughs> i have another I have another bad uh uh, something going into any uh, sort of digitalization project or, or improvement change thingy. Uh, and that's do not assume that your master data is good. Mm. Um, because I've seen this many times when we talk to customers and we ask them, so do you, do you have good base data that we can start working with? And they say, of course, yes, we do. And then a couple of days or weeks later, we get that data and it's well should we say less than perfect being very very polite or should i tell you the truth the truth is it's yeah. somewhere between bad and catastrophic normally mm -hmm. um, um and okay i'm gonna be, like, be frank there i've seen a few examples that are good uh, over over the years and I, i've looked at the data for 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 big global chains for like 200 of them or, or more um and I see maybe two were good, <laughs> something like two or three, uh, mm -hmm. something like that, and then the rest w was not really good. And, and of course, some of the errors will be completely critical, as the ones I mentioned of driving into the Atlantic Ocean. Some will be less so, uh, mm -hmm. but it might cause bad customer journeys, which is bad in itself. But it also just might hurt you in, um, in uh, consistency and uh, your, your your rank and those sort of things might be hurt in the long run as well. Mm. Uh, so your data is probably not going to be perfect. And this is because large organizations, things happen over time. Many people put things in and um, there, there, there were reasons, but you, you need to realize this is going to be uh, something you need to work with a little bit. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, the last bad tip I, I thought of was um, uh, when going into a project, either like the ones we do or just generally speaking, uh, do not get too hung up on features uh, uh, from different vendors. Like, I really want that or I really want that. First, decide what results you want to get. Mm. What, what are sort of the main goals of the project um, and, and the process to get there? And uh, we're here now and we want to get there. What needs to be true for that happen? That type of thinking first. And mm. once you've done that, sure, I work, we work with technology, both of us. So, so we're, we, we like features. We like tech. We think it's super cool. It's always fun to look at new stuff. But we also need to keep our eye on the ball, which is the actual goal. And then once we know that, we can start thinking, like, will this feature help a little bit? Yeah, sure, let's bring that in. Will this feature? Sure. So, but do not start with the features because that, that's a bad idea, I think. Um, um, I think it's also a mission. Yeah, start with the long term or the sort of medium type, medium goal and, and work backwards from there. I think. Those were the don'ts. Uh, I can think of more, yeah. of course, but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm feeling pretty some, bummed. Do you have some happy? Yeah, let's, let's some, talk about some happy stuff. What's, that? what's some good stuff? Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, I think you should always have some someone own the issue um, to, to, uh, to get the project uh, to where you want it, you need to have a clear ownership. And this is especially true when we're talking medium to huge size organizations. Uh, this is um, the online to offline journey might be something that no one currently has specific responsibility for. It might be sort of a little bit on marketing, might be a little bit on digital, might be e-commerce a little bit maybe, uh, it might be, uh, yeah, depending on how you're organized. Uh, you should have clear ownership of it. Um, I think that's super important. Um, so that's one thing. And when they when people do that, that's a good, good, good uh, sort of sign that this is going to end happily. Mm -hmm. The next one I thought it was, uh, if it's a large organization, you might have uh, levels above uh, in, in the company that are not working with this, but you should have buy-in from management. They don't necessarily need to be involved, uh, they can delegate and then if people working with it have the mandate to sort of make decisions and do stuff that's fine but um they should be aware of it and they should sort of have a buy-in that's that it's happening uh, otherwise if you run into trouble somehow uh, either with your data or your internal processes or something uh you're going to hit a wall if the management is going to i don't know what this is i don't care so uh have management know about it at least and, and buy in preferably. Mm. Right. And the last one I thought about, and this is something I think ties back to to the uh, the third one I had on, on don'ts. It's but have some goals, and they should be measurable. Otherwise, they are just ideas and, and fantasies and visions. And like there should be goals, actual actual measurable goals, and they could be on that sort of detail level or more general. That's really up to you. Uh, when it comes to online to offline journeys, uh, it could be actual data uh, from the different networks. Uh, again, on Google, it would be something like how many discovery searches do we have over our entire population or a select a number of, of uh, locations. Um, it could be something like how my, many driving directions are we getting? Uh, and then watch that number and, and see where it goes and have, have a target goal of what you want to happen. Um, so that's one thing, uh, or uh, preferably, I would I would add like people through the door. Start measuring how many people walk through the door of your store, your restaurant, uh, pull into your gas station, uh, use your charging pole, uh, or, or um, come find you whatever type of, of uh, organization or business you are. Uh, so measure how many people are using stuff, and because this is something I, I, I enjoy. And sometimes customers tell us what the average value per customer or just person through the door. They don't even have to buy something, but the average value of someone walking through the door is. And they most times have a very good number. And of course, this project, you can't say goes up to the number goes up. Can we then attribute all that to, to the uh, online to offline project that we did? No, probably not, because we did other stuff as well. We did, but 
uh, it should have a positive effect. That's that's all I'm saying. And then ha put that down uh, what you want to reach. Yeah, and so those are measure it. Like, and you can basically put a almost put a, a dollar value or euro value or whatever. Yeah, well, you yeah, you, you uh, could. And 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 uh, and then uh, the different actions and ish, uh, tasks you want to do during the project. What you can what you can measure them against is will this help reach that goal? Uh, and if you can only say yes, well, then it's probably a good idea to do it. And if it's no, yeah, skip it. And if it's a maybe, you need to maybe evaluate some more before you decide. So, uh, so yeah, it's, I mean, I'm simplifying, but yeah, have a goal. Have a goal. That's good have advice goal. for online, offline marketing and good advice for life in general. Have a goal. Yeah, did, or in, in this case, it's just digitalization. And this is something, I mean, COVID, the corona year that we've been living through is interesting because, uh, okay, for some of our customers uh, that are sort of in the hospitality sector, it's been hard to invest in new stuff for obvious reasons. But we do have many um, industries that have really taken the chance and put, put their processes of digitalization on steroids. Mm -hmm. uh, as, so it's, it seems like a lot of the things that you expected to happen maybe in two or three years or, or is going to happen way sooner. Uh, yeah. and, and it's, of course, not only the things we work with, it's e-commerce and other stuff too, but uh, people live in the real world and they want to maybe find a charging pool for their new electric vehicle and they need to find it. So uh, yeah, that, that needs to work. Great. Yeah. Yeah, it, absolutely. That that's uh, we we made it pretty far without talking about the way COVID impacted the online the the digitalization. Uh, no, it's yeah. But, well, maybe we're we're, we're <laughs> we've said <laughs> many things about that over the. I mean, people have talked about it. So yeah, true. But I, mm -hmm. one thing I, I like to point out, at least when, I, when I'm writing um, our articles and so on, is that that yeah, COVID shifted or sped up this shift to digital, but uh, it's it's not going to go back to the way it was before. Like. This this uh, this change, this digitalization push was happening already. So COVID made it happen quicker, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna um, necessarily go back to normal, like pre-COVID normal. So that that companies yeah. that are that are digitalizing now, this isn't like a temporary only during COVID kind of measure. This is a this is a change you're making for the future. You're just making it sooner than you're just being forced to make it sooner than maybe you would have otherwise done it. Absolutely. And it's, I mean, people use their cell phones and their smartphones all the time. If you think that's going to change and they st will stop, yeah, yeah, you probably shouldn't invest so much in, in, in the digitalization. But if you if you think it's here to stay, uh, which I think is a good bet, uh, yeah. then then there there's probably opportunities uh, if you do. And there's probably lots of risks if you don't. So. Um, right. So, because competitors are going to do stuff, uh, they are doing stuff. Uh, so, what what are you going to do, so so to speak? Uh, well, risks. It sounds like we're drifting back into to negative territory. I think maybe. Oh, we sorry, sorry about that. There's an opportunity there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you uh, th again. Thanks for helping hire me, and uh, thanks for joining today to talk about this uh, digitalization. Yeah, I uh, hope my uh, words made some sense, and it's always great to talk to you. Yeah, everyone, you made sense every once in a while. There was some, some every once in a while. Thanks, that's excellent. Every once in a while. I like, I like. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for being thanks, here. Everyone.